At the end of a week when there wasn't much evidence that leads of old-fashioned loyalty, a statue was unveiled of a man who epitomized that very quality. So what did those who knew Billy Bremner think he would have made of the actions of Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank? Well, that's nothing to do with Billy. We, 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 we played the game because we loved it and we liked to play. Yeah. Money was never even a question. Mm. Not even a question. Well, I know Billy as a character. He'd have gone up to him and give him a bit of a volley, and I think. But, you know, he wasn't shy to do that to the players. That was his job. He was captain. And if he felt any of the players was letting the side down or letting things down, he would have let them know. So without their top scorer of the last two seasons, how would Leeds, with the youngest strike force in the Premiership, fair against Derby County. Well, despite the lion's share of possession, not too well. Their efforts were all from long range. New boy Danny Mills testing Mark Hume in the best of Leeds' first half chances, the Derby keeper doing just enough. After the break, Lee Bowyer was on target for Leeds, and again, Hume, though hardly rock solid, kept his side in the match. Then Derby, who were never really at the races, even went so far as to give Leeds a golden opportunity when a Rory de Lapp back pass found Harry Kewell. Boom to the rescue once more. Leeds just might find themselves missing Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank more than they thought they would. We've been dropped uh, in it by Jimmy Hasselbank refusing to play for this club. We need a striker, we know that. But we're not magic going to magic him out of thin air, uh, and I'm not going to spend the money yet. Uh, we have somebody that we don't want. Now, you've been linked with every striker this side of the equator, but uh, eyes on anyone in particular? We're going to be linked with everybody. Uh, you know, we're linked with somebody today, fishing chip paper tomorrow. Uh, I know who I want, but let the pe everybody else speculate, because that's all we're going to speculate. So he clearly has his eyes on someone, and if that new striker shows a fraction of the passion and loyalty of this man, Leeds will be on to a winner. David O'Leary being very secretive about any new signings. We'll check it out in the coming weeks. Now it's time to get you caught up on all the rest of the action from around the league. Away big spenders as Newcastle and Aston Villa met at St. James's Park. The mighty left foot of former Toon youngster Alan Thompson nearly gave the visitors the lead early on in a game that will probably be remembered more for some controversial refereeing decisions than the quality of the football. Frenchman Alan Goma rose to head against the bar, but shortly before the end of the half came the first of the two yellow cards that Alan Shearer was to receive. Colin Calderwood was the Villa defender on the receiving end. Now, Shearer didn't look too happy at that decision, but he was utterly amazed when referee Uriah Rennie pulled out that yellow card again, duly followed by a red one. It was certainly a physical encounter between Scottish international Calderwood and the England captain, and it ended with the first dismissal of Shearer's career. The home fans were still complaining when Villa's top scorer last season, Julian Jochim, nipped in to net the decider. The home boss, Rude Hullet, was very upset with the referee. We feel really robbed today. And um, I think that the overall performance of the referee was, was really bad. He took a lot of bad decisions for both. You could see us also, Gregory was also on the sideline all the time. And he had a major uh, influence on the game, and uh, for me it was unacceptable. I can't accept that. Uh, he made it very plain exactly what he was looking for or not looking for, and uh, the price will be paid if, if, if the, the mark was overstepped. And, and uh, we felt Uriah had a good game. It's good it happened now, and hopefully he, uh, he will get uh, some good uh, instructions. Maybe he has to maybe go to the second division or something like that, because this is, this is incredible. I've never seen, I've been 18 years in this business, but I've never seen something like this. West Ham were full value for their win over Tottenham, and as early as the second minute, they had the Spurs defence rocking. A training ground move saw summer signing from Derby, Paolo Wanchop hit the bar with a header. The only goal of the game came at the other end of the first half. Spurs had repeatedly tried to prize Frank Lampard away from Upton Park, and that's how he thanks them. Only a nasty ligament injury to defender Ian Pearce spoiled a perfect day for the Hammers. Spurs came close after the break through Tim Sherwood's header, but Iron's boss Harry Redknapp was well pleased with his team's performance in their 1-0 win. The end of a good week. It's been a good week for us. You know, we went out to Holland and uh, had a great result out there to qualify for the final League Cup. 
long journey back and got back in the early hours of Thursday and you know, I thought maybe it'd take a bit out of the lads but uh, they responded today in great fashion and terrific start of the season for us. Both Coventry and Southampton have been perennial strugglers so a good start, absolutely vital. New Moroccan signings Yusef Chippo and Mustafa Hadji making their debuts for Coventry. But Southampton also meant business. The back heel from Pahars, the shot from Marsden, and somehow kept out by Swedish keeper Magnus Hedman. Southampton set pieces caused the biggest concerns. This flashing header from St. Zone Moroccan Hassan Kachlul. Paul Jones in the Saints goal made several terrific stops. This perhaps the best from Mark Edworthy. Coventry have survived in the top flight for 32 years and Southampton for 21, but it was to be the Saints' first opening day win since 1988. Egil Ostenstadt's been on fire in pre-season with six in five. He was picked out by Matt Letizier and he showed he's simply oozing confidence. Coventry nil, Southampton won. We broke a duck today and we hadn't won in 12 years, first game of the season. And back in the last season, I think we won our first away game, or the last uh, away game, for about 17 years, someone told me that. So we've um, broke another duck and we earned it today. It was a hard-fought match. Whoa! It took the Saints 10 matches to win a game in the field for the first time this year. The defending champions coming out and it was game on. Everton manager Walter Smith hoping for better days this season. Early on, his team with the good attempt, Nick Barmby takes it all the way in and shoots, but no goal. Barmby's attempt just over the crossbar. Now to the seventh minute, Man United on the move. Goal kick by Mark Bosnich, and watch Andy Cole get it to his pal and teammate, Dwight York. York knows what to do with it. He did that a lot last season. York gets one out of the gate quickly. That website just took a hit. Cole and York combined to give Man United a 1-0 lead. Everton trying to come back after York kicks it in. It'll be Mitch Ward with the cross. Don Hutchinson tries the header, but he went postal. No goal there. Red Devils attacking once again. David Beckham, the long ball to York. Oh, he shoots, but this time, Paul Gerard says, not in my neck. York almost had number two in the game, but Gerard, with the lockdown, wasn't going to happen there. So, the first half ended right there, 1-0 in favor of Man United. Now to the second half, Everton on the free kick. Look at the action on the goal here. Kevin Campbell tries it. Hutchinson's shot, saved. Mark Bosnich, Phil Neville, Henning Berg, all doing their part to keep the ball out of the Man United net on the furious rush by Everton. Now to the 87th minute, David Unsworth centers. Barmby knocks it in, and then Yap Stam will get credit for it. There's a problem. Yap plays for Man United. That is an own goal, and that ties the game up. 1-1. Stam can't believe it, trying to do his part in defense, but hey... Sometimes it doesn't work. So Man United trying to get one at the end. Cole, pass to Beckham who crosses. York, not in time, just past him. And that's the way it ended. 1-1, a draw, the final score. It is now time to check in with an old friend.